Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the UFW firewall on Ubuntu and Debian systems. And if you're not familiar, UFW stands for Uncomplicated Firewall. I'll let you be the judge of that if you think it is uncomplicated or not. I personally think it is based on the syntax alone. Uh, but to demonstrate the functionality, you can do a lot with this, but to demonstrate the functionality, I want to, by the end of this tutorial, show you how to uh, lock down all external connections to the, re the, to the server itself, um, except for SSH over port 22 um, over the TCP protocol from a specific IP address. So that sounds like a pretty complicated thing to do, but it's actually very straightforward, one single command that we can execute. And we'll build up to that throughout the tutorial, just so you have a solid foundational understanding of how UFW works. So let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. I'm logged in via SSH to two separate Ubuntu servers. This one at this IP address ending in 196 on the left, and this one over here on the right ending in IP address, or the IP address ending in 115. So we're going to um, install UFW over here on the left hand side and we can do that with apt install UFW in case you don't already have it. I already have it on my system so nothing has to happen here. So let's first do a UFW status and we'll see that the, the firewall is not active right now, it's inactive. Um, but just so we're all on the same page, a good way to, um, I guess, set some defaults here is to uh, disallow all incoming connections and allow all outgoing connections. So that's like a very strict firewall. And we'll we'll open up, uh, uh, we'll break that firewall. We'll let some holes through the firewall throughout the tutorial here. So, but let's just start with that. So we can do UFW default, deny incoming, and UFW default, allow outgoing. Okay, so very, very simple to do that. Um, and right now, if we do UFW status again, we're still inactive, so we need to actually activate the firewall. Um, but before we activate the firewall, I just wanna show you that I can SSH into this from an external system. So we can do that with SSH root at 23.92.26.196 password. And there we go, we logged in, welcome to the server. We'll, uh, we'll see this message pop up anytime we log into the, the remote server here. So uh, let's get out of here and let's do UFW enable to actually enable the, uh, the firewall. And it's saying this command might dis disrupt the existing SSH connection over here on the left-hand side. Um, I never seen it actually do that, uh, but I'm sure it's possible, but I'm gonna take my chances and enable the firewall anyway. Okay, so the firewall is active and enabled on this, uh, on system startup, so we don't have to worry about it now. Um, let's go ahead and try to log in again via SSH from the external connection. We'll do hit enter, and it's just gonna hang there because all incoming connections are blocked based on our default rules that we just applied. So that um, that is working. That is exactly what it's supposed to do. So we'll have to break out of this here, control C to get back to the terminal session. Now let's, let's open up a hole in the firewall to allow SSH connections. And we can do that really simply with UFW allow SSH. And you don't even have to know the port. Um, of SSH to open up that port, uh, but you could also do UFW allow 22 in this case. You can specify the port or the the application that usually typically runs on that port. So with, uh, with allowing that, we can try to SSH in again from the external connection, from the external server, I should say, and we can do that. And we see right away that it's asking us for the password, so that's a good sign. And now, welcome to the server. We are logged into the remote server via SSH. So that firewall rule has been added and allows us um, that incoming connection. So let's let's back out of that again. And if we don't, for whatever reason, want that rule anymore, we can do a UFW delete. Um, and what what do we want to delete? We want to delete the fact that we're allowing SSH. So it's going to delete that rule again over here. We can test it out and it's not prompting us for a password because port 22, the SSH port, is blocked. So we'll, we'll back out of that again. Okay, so um, one thing that is I think is really cool, if you have a static IP address that you're working from, um, you wanna block 
all SSH connections unless it's coming from a specific IP address. And we can do that again with this uh, fairly straightforward syntax. Um, we can do something like UFW allow from, okay, and then the IP address that we want to allow from is over here. So 192.53.124.115. Make sure I get that right, 115. Um, and we'll say to any port 22, okay? So we'll add that fire rule, firewall rule, and then we'll try to SSH back in over here on that uh, on that specific IP address, asking us for the password. That's a good sign, and it lets us in. Now let's back out of that. Let's open up a new terminal window here, just a local terminal window on my MacBook, and let's try to do the same thing. So SSH root at 23.92.26.196 and it's preventing us from logging in via SSH because we are not the IP address that we specified. We are not 192.53.124.115. We are 23.92.26.196. You get the point. So all, we'll get out of here, all um, incoming SSH connections are disallowed, are blocked, unless it's coming from that specific IP address that we specified. Um, now, we can expand this rule a little bit further. Uh, UFW allow from this specific IP address to any port, uh, but typically for SSH, you don't need UDP. So that for uh, the IP protocol, there's TCP and UDP. We don't really need um, UDP, so let's just specify explicitly proto TCP to make that a little bit more locked down. So we'll execute that. And if we do uh, UFW status, we'll actually see that we have kind of two redundant rules, right? So we have um, the first rule here, which is allowing uh, from that IP address uh, on TCP and UDP. Uh, but this second one that we just created is explicitly saying TCP. So um, if we want to get rid of, I mean, we can keep them both, but let's get rid of this first one here just to show you how to do that. We can do UFW delete. And, and before we said, uh, we explicitly said the rule, but we can delete by number. So this is the first one. This is the second rule. So we can say delete one. And you'll see it's confirming that we actually want this to happen. Yes. And if we do UFW status again, we'll see now that we only have the one existing rule. So um, just want to show you that that is actually the case. And uh, and we can try to log in again, just, just for completeness sake. Let's SSH in, it's asking us for the password. And we are able to log in from the uh, the server that we're actually allowing external connections from. So um, if we wanna, for whatever reason, temporarily disable the, wall, the firewall, we can do UFW disable and the firewall stopped and disabled on system startup. So again, if we go to our uh, local um, my, on my MacBook Pro, not a remote server, and try to SSH in from the local computer here. Um, it should allow us to log in, and it does. Um, so, guys, if you have any questions about UFW, the firewall in Ubuntu or Debian, let me know in the questions below. This wasn't um, necessarily a comprehensive tutorial. You can do a lot more with this. Uh, where we specified SSH, you can say like HTTP, HTTPS, stuff like that. You can specify ports, ranges, all that stuff. So uh, check out the documentation for all the specifics, but I hope that this video was enough to at least introduce you to UFW. Uh, so yeah, like I said, let me know if you have any questions. If you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, definitely consider subscribing to this channel. I really appreciate it if you do. And if you do subscribe, I will see you in the next video.